Well, the video for today is going to be on a DriveCon XT series drive that came out of our um, one of our cranes at work. It was on the uh, trolley drive. I'm trying to adjust this to see if I can get most of this in the camera. I'm not sure if I can or not. But anyways, it had had an intermittent um, problem. Um, it would, uh, I'll start taking this apart as I'm describing what's going on here. It would run just fine and then randomly shut off. And sometimes at the worst possible moment it would shut off. You know, for example, if we had a big heavy piece on this crane, this happens to be a dual hoist crane. So what that means is you have two hoists and we, have, we handle some pretty heavy big heavy stuff at work a lot of times so you end up with using both hoists to flip pieces around it's the safest way to do it but if you're halfway around a flip and say the trolley quits running well that's a needless to say a pretty unsafe situation and that was starting to happen on a fairly regular basis we kept getting a, a fault uh, I can't remember the exact terminology but I think it was a um, high heat sink failure um, high transistor pack heat failure or something to that effect so I'm assuming that more than likely the uh, IGBT module that's in here is probably bad but I don't know that for certain so I'm just gonna basically disassemble this on camera and we can maybe take a look at what's here I'm going to probably do this in maybe two or three parts. I'll just show the disassembly first and then come back and then test individual components. Probably the bus capacitors first and then the IGBT module. This should have one of the uh, CMicron skip modules, SKIIP modules. I had one of these drives apart a couple of years ago that was on the bridge and it's, it was a larger version of this particular one and that was what was in that drive I have to assume that this probably has about the same but these are really really nicely laid out as far as trying to disassemble them and get to whatever you need you don't have a huge amount of cables everything's pretty um, pretty modular I kind of like the way the drives are set up as far as actually trying to work on them. But the, uh, the last drive that I had apart had a similar issue and it actually had um, two bus capacitors that had failed and I don't know if that's the case in this one or not it, that one was had a similar fault it seemed like it was happening a little bit more often so it may have just been further along than this one now once you get to this point here and you have the top off of this uh, if you can see it here but there's a fan on the front here well Try and get this in the camera. Right here is a connector. Well, it's really tough to get the circuit board out without getting this fan off first. So there's two little clips. You gotta kind of push in and work that in a little bit. Then also on the bottom, By the way, one of the first things I looked at when I was up there to look at it to see if, was, if the uh, heat sink was clear and clean, and it obviously is. But there's two more clips down inside here, and then you have to pull that fan out of there before you can get this circuit board up out of here. You can do it without doing that, I've done it, but it's pretty difficult and I just I have a feeling you probably could end up possibly damaging something. Okay, and also um, 
See these four screws here for the bus capacitors. Now I know for a fact that these are discharged because this hasn't been powered up in over a month and well, I actually had this apart a little bit ago just to check and make sure they're dead, but you always want to uh, make sure those bus capacitors are discharged, otherwise you'll be in for one heck of a nasty surprise. And they do hold a charge a lot longer than you think. <clears throat> These three leads right here that go back inside here there's kind of a uh, bit of a filter network and then also you've got an inductor that goes between the drive and the motor that kind of helps filter out noise and then also if that if winding happens to short out on that motor it tends to limit the current a little bit to where you don't fry the drive at least that's the idea Just get them out of there. I would normally mark them, but this drive isn't probably going back together again. One thing that they specify at work or that one mandate at work is that when it comes to a crane, we don't um, repair or modify any of this stuff. We just buy new. That's more than anything that's just for legal issues if somebody happens to get hurt on a crane and the company has to go to court or whatever then you know how lawyers and courts are somebody would somehow twist it around to where the fact that I had replaced this IGBT module in here is why the guy running a crane who was more than likely stupid got himself hurt so it's cheaper and better for them in the long run not to replace these or not to repair them I mean not replace them they do replace them okay right here underneath this little black thing that is where your IGBT module is there's two bolts right here and there's a specific torque spec I don't have it but if you were to say put one of these back together you definitely want to torque those to the right spec it's very important um, you have this cover here and the IGBT is approximately this size. Underneath there you're going to see little spring-loaded terminals that go up to the underside of the uh, circuit board and there will be actual pads etched into the circuit board that that IGBT contacts. It's actually more than just a IGBT pack. It's going to be more than likely just by looking at it since I don't see a diode bridge anywhere it's probably going to have a three-phase um, diode bridge rectifier built in and also probably there will be a uh, extra IGBT in there for um, braking. I'll have to look once I get this out of here I'll see if I can't find the data sheet I don't have a real good definitive way of testing these other than basically just a uh, multimeter. You can basically use the diode function on the multimeter to make sure that the IGBTs are turning on and turning off. But other than that, and also I guess I probably could actually come to think of it. I haven't tried to test one of these until I've gotten this. I could probably use my LC101 to uh, test these under voltage. Most of these are uh, rated for fairly high voltage. Okay, so I'll set this circuit board aside. And there's that IGBT I was talking about. You can see the little spring-loaded tabs that are on there. And then on the back side, now I've had this apart. I should I should uh, mention that this is actually the second time I've had this apart. I filmed a video on this last week that was just total crap, so I decided not to post it. So that's why there's no heat sink compound on there. But what I will say is I did not like, I might just actually insert that little part of the video. But one thing I'm seeing here, there's not very much thermal compound at all. You don't really... A lot of people slather that stuff on there. You don't really want to do that. But 
this seems excessively little. It's been here just so you can see what heat sink compound was there, but there was a very tiny amount of heat sink compound in this. And if you look at the housing on here, it isn't like it was really smoothly machined. I mean, there's quite a few machine marks you feel around in there. You can actually feel the machine marks. So, I mean, this, this thing has been in service for 10 years, so it's not like, you know, there's much uh, shame for it, I guess. But I was still, I would, ex would have expected more of the heat sink compound there is. And obviously you don't want to just slather that stuff on there where you got a quarter inch thick of it, but still there was very minimal amount on this IGBT. If you look on the back side of this board here, you can see those pads that are in there and those all contact this IGBT. That just, those things are just spring loaded and it gets squeezed in there it's actually in a way kind of a nice uh, nice way of doing that if everything's working working correctly I'm not too sure what happens over time or if there's a lot of heat if maybe some of those contacts quit making good contact maybe that's what was going on here now here's the bus capacitors right here now if you look at this you'll notice there's a little arrow in each one of these because you can put this in one of three different ways so you could actually have your your positive, which is here and here, spun around over to here and here. But if you look at this, they made this nice little arrow right here. And you just align those arrows up and you know you have that turned to the correct direction. So I'll pull these up out of here. More than likely the power electronics somewhere is the issue in this, but it's don't really know that for certain. It could be the con something that in the control itself, the actual the circuit that actually fires the IGBTs, but usually that's not the problem. Okay, so these are both 470 microfarad. 420 volt DC so we'll uh, test them here in a minute I've got this apart about as far as I really need to so I'll probably shut the camera off here and I'll start off on probably testing these two um, bus capacitors for leakage value and ESR. I've got a couple different methods for doing that, a couple different meters, and I'll explain why whenever I come back, why I use a couple different meters.